As the floors began to fail, the last terrible phase of the destruction started. The efficiency of the design meant that with any major element removed, the whole structure would fall. The reason why is best demonstrated with a simple wooden model. Um, we have here two uh, frame structures. Basically, these are the columns, and these are three floors. And I'm uh, certain that we had fires, and these fires uh, caused the, this floor basically to fail and drop onto the floors below, underneath. So once this floor was gone, we had a situation similar to this one here, where this intermediate floor disappeared, basically dropped. This changes dramatically the way in which the loads and the building are carried. Let me illustrate this by adding uh, weights here to the structure. And uh, this load, again, that I just added is transmitted through these columns all the way to the table. The important thing to understand is this floor does not carry any of this load. This, the only function of this floor is to connect the columns together, to tighten the columns together, and prevent them from buckling. The model on the left is able to take a very large amount of weight. But the one with the missing floor is only able to support a quarter of that amount before its columns twist and buckle, and it collapses. This is the mechanism that almost certainly caused the collapse of the World Trade Center, the fire destroying the floors that kept the walls standing. After burning for 53 minutes, the South Tower collapsed in 11 seconds. Thirty minutes later, the North Tower crumbled. Once it was in progress, nothing could stop it. By the time the tops of the buildings had fallen just the height of a single story, they had gathered enough momentum to smash each floor underneath, accelerating until all 500,000 tons hit the ground at 120 miles an hour. <laughs> 